I'm Dr. Rallis. I want you to consider this message before donating any more money towards cancer. Raising money for cancer is big business. It has become part of our cultural mosaic. You can hardly open an email. You can hardly go to the grocery store without being confronted by someone who wants to help raise money for cancer. The foot soldiers in this movement are those that have been touched by the disease, either personally or through a friend or family member. They are fueled by an intense passion to help, coupled with an incomplete understanding of health and an incomplete understanding of the disease. The net result is mass public fear and gross public ignorance, which further perpetuates the epidemic and the course of this disease. You have undoubtedly given money for cancer. You may have even worn a pink ribbon. You may have gone for a run for cancer. You may have done this many times, yet most of us are still unclear as to what causes cancer and where it comes from. Let's start there. Cancer is caused by mutations to the DNA of your cells. Most mutations occur uh, spontaneously. Most mutations are, like my professor used to say, deleterious. Some are actually advantageous. But in terms of cancer, mutations to the cell cause the cell to shut off its ability to die and also shut off its ability to transform or differentiate. Cells begin to proliferate in undifferentiated ways and they grow and they no longer know when to die. The normal process is cell division, cell division, cell division, cell division, so on and so forth until cell death. Cancer cells no longer have that because the DNA has been shut off. The net result is a growth or what's called a tumor. These tumors are typically benign or non-lethal. Sometimes they are invasive and sometimes lethal. Here's the key. What actually causes these mutations? Three things. Our lifestyle, number one. What you eat, how you move, how you think. Two, the environment. Repeated exposure to, to DNA-altering environmental toxins is one of the fundamental causes of cancer. And three, hereditary weakness and or age. The cure lies in preventing, reversing, or correcting these mutations to our DNA, i.e. improving lifestyle and dramatically improving the environment. We are now presently exposed to over 3,500 chemicals on a daily basis. Most of these are mutagenic or cancer-causing. Saving lives has to happen ahead of time. So understand this, when you give money for cancer research at the present time. You are giving money or you are donating money to support a fundamentally flawed and skewed system that's politically motivated and responsible for the perpetuation of this disease. You are at best paying for better treatment and better drugs, whatever that means. None of the money that you are, going, that you are donating is going towards altering the course of this disease epidemic. Before you help raise another cent for cancer research, I need you to do these four things. One, improve your lifestyle. Improving your lifestyle will have the biggest impact on this epidemic and will most dramatically reduce your risk for developing this disease. Two, I want you to think about improving the environment and I want you to help put political pressure on those that can help improve our environment. Three. You need to contact local charities which are already raising money for cancer research and help push them towards putting more money towards lifestyle, environmental medicine, and the prevention of this disease. At present time, less than four cents of every dollar is going towards prevention. It's all going towards, to, towards drug-based treatments. Four, contact your local politicians. Put pressure on them. At present time, all money is being lobbied from, from, from Big Pharma to help perpetuate drug treatments. We need to make our politicians aware that prevention is the fundamental answer to this disease epidemic.